Ash, a special agent in charge of the FBI, Steve Belanja, and um, a Commissioner of Police, Byron Lockwood, and Deputy Commissioner Joseph Grimalia. Uh, the four of us will uh, provide updates. Uh, so at 345, a call went out of a person shot outside of McKinley High School. is at 325, so this was after dismissal, and this was outside of the school building where this incident occurred. Obviously, we never want any kind of violent incident inside or outside or around our school buildings, but it's very important to note uh, that this did occur outside of the school. It did not occur inside the school. Uh, we have a very uh, strong law enforcement partnership and there's a very close partnership uh, between uh, the Buffalo Police and the Buffalo Public Schools uh, enabling our uh, D District Police Station and other law enforcement agencies to respond very quickly. I want to thank uh, the FBI, I want to thank the New York State Police, uh, county agencies and others uh, that have been part of this response. Uh, to provide more detail uh, on uh, conditions and response, uh, we will have uh, Deputy Police Commissioner Joseph Grimalia uh, be the last speaker. Now I want to turn things over to uh, Dr. Kreiner Cash, Superintendent of the Buffalo Public Schools. Thank you, Mayor Brown. And first of all, colleagues, let me say that uh, our thoughts and prayers are with our two uh, victims this evening. Uh, we certainly are praying for them alongside the families that are here with their students waiting to receive their students. There are still uh, maybe over 100 students here and who are on lockdown. And uh, the parents are waiting over here to my left to receive them. So we just want to uh, extend our uh, consideration and appreciation for their patience. We will say also that we really appreciate the partnership that we have with the Buffalo uh, City, City of Buffalo and the Buffalo Police Department. They have been excellent all year long as our partners, uh, particularly the officers that are with us every day, uh, Chief Aaron Young and Lieutenant uh, Craig. Uh, they are just with us on the scene whenever we have incidents in school. Certainly nothing this year has risen to the level that we see here today. We will also uh, want to say that we communicated as soon as we could with our parents because this happened at an awkward time of day. It was at the dismissal time and it was at a time when we were still gathering information about what happened. There was a lot of misinformation and I needed to get make sure it, what was accurate and the mayor and I were in close correspondence from about 3.20, 3.30 all the way until we came to this press conference. Next, from my angle and standpoint, the board, uh, I've informed and that what I will do with my staff, I've already directed them, is we are going to reset McKinley uh, in a phased approach uh, certainly for the next three days, they will be on remote uh, learning, and that has already occurred. The communications have gone out. Um, at that time, we will be talking with students, with teachers and all staff, and certainly guiding and directing and preparing our administrators for the next steps. There has been a plan in place for some time uh, with McKinley because we've had bumps here uh, much of the year. So that's the first part. If after looking at the detail of this plan, which my executive team is working right now, it becomes necessary to extend 
the period of reset, then it could be in a day or two that I say that McKinley will not reopen in person until the 28th of February. So there's a possibility that on the 21st, that's the first phase, that I'd like to have us back if all the conditions uh, warrant that. If not, we will continue to reset, continue to make sure our plan uh, works for all of the students, and then we'll bring them back in phases on the 28th. Please be assured that we are doing everything we can to continue to keep all of our schools safe, and we will have McKinley uh, back very shortly at his very best. Can, can we certainly want to pray for the young man that is in the hospital right now. We are particularly concerned about his condition, and we are on uh, constant alert right now to hear how he is faring. We, we'll, take so thank you. we'll take questions at the end. We're going to go now to Special Agent in Charge of the FBI, Steve Belanger. I'm Steve Belanger. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the FBI office here in Buffalo. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, echo the sentiments of the superintendent and my thoughts and prayers are with the injured student and the injured security guard. My thoughts are also with the other students, uh, the administration, and the parents who are also uh, going to be traumatized by this incident. The role of the FBI in this incident is to provide support to the Buffalo Police Department as they lead this investigation. And I've pledged the commissioner and the deputy commissioner all available resources of the FBI office here in Buffalo. Whatever he needs, whether it's investigative, tactical, uh, intelligence, or uh, evidence response, I've made available uh, to the Buffalo Police Department. Uh, just to be clear, there's no ongoing threat uh, at the, the school currently, and that has been resolved. With that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Grimalia. The only update I have at this time is uh, the, the student is still in surgery. Uh, that is still ongoing. We have detectives at the hospital. We're monitoring that condition, and the security guard is, uh, as I'm told, is non-life-threatening injuries and uh, is at ECMC. We are aggressively working this case. We have a lot of investigators, a lot of resources, a lot of the federal agencies uh, and, and the state agencies. Everybody has pitched in, but we have a lot of resources. If anyone has any information, any tips, any witnesses, you can call our confidential tip line, 847-2255. You can call Crime Stoppers. You can call 911 any way to get information to us. If you know anything about the shooting, if you know who the shooter is, please contact us immediately. Thank you. Uh, Do you have a description of the shooter? Uh, we're not putting one out at this time. Like I said, we're, we're moving aggressively. If uh, we feel the need to get something out, uh, we're going to work this for a bit, and then we'll get something out if, if, uh, if we get to that point. But we are, as I said, our investigators are aggressively working this. Dr. Cash, you mentioned um, two things. Number one, can you describe how these students are going to be released and how they're going to be reunited with their families? Because obviously there are concerned parents on either side of the scene. Yeah, thank you for that question, sir. However, this is in a matter that the police department has taken control of the scene because it is a crime scene, so I would defer that question to our commissioner. Commissioner. So uh, we still have students in the building. We have parents here. We have officers with the uh, parents. Uh, to, to do this as quickly and as safely as possible, like I said before, we don't want everybody coming out at one time. So it is a process. We are doing it under, uh, you know, under uh, police supervision along with the uh, principal of the school and our school chief. So we, we have facilitated some of the students out and we're still working through that process. Can I also just these? clarify, the person, the security guard who was shot is an actual security guard. It's not a school resource officer, correct? It is not a police officer. It's a, uh, a school security officer. With the suspect still at large, uh, any plans for additional patrols out in this area? We, we have a lot of resources out here now. Our day shift is still held over. Uh, we, we have officers from other parts of the city. We've brought in some other resources, other units. We, we have sufficient resources here. Was uh, the shooter a student or no? I'm sorry? Was the shooter a student or no? Uh, we're, we're not prepared to answer that yet. We're still working on uh, some, some identification stuff. Doctor, do you have leave? Dr. Cash, you mentioned that there are some... I don't know. Okay. If it's on the sidewalk, technically that's not considered Buffalo Public, but it's in our campus, so it's Park. happening. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. But it happened in our in our campus. Right. Did you see the other thing parking lot? No, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it occurred at the end of a walkway, right by the parking lot on the south side of the building. Okay. And that's right by the greenhouse, correct? A, a little bit before that. Okay. And the other question. 
know that there have been fights at McKinley High School, some of them really, really bad. The videos have been out there. Because of those fights and the, the violence and the teachers saying that they were concerned about their safety, have you done anything or had you done anything up to this day? Because when teachers say they feared something like this would happen, what have you been doing to try and to make sure this is safe? Absolutely. I mean, every day we monitor all the incidents in all the schools. I'm brought up to date for every incident that occurs throughout the district every day. And there are incidents that occur throughout the system. McKinley, we have put additional uh, teacher assistance, additional staffing in the hallways so that we monitor the passing of classes. We put additional resources, at least 15 additional staffing resources in this year alone. And every uh, day we are looking to bolster wherever we see the data suggests. So security guards and officers, we put additional uh, of those into the budget. We also have additional SROs and police support and backup here almost on a daily basis. So the Mayor security Brown, guard who was shot, is that person one. part of that upgraded security plan or, or is that person new to the school in terms of bolstering that security? Those two, those, two, those two individuals are, are, are among our strongest SROs, I'm sorry, security officers. So I triage and move security officers around. Those were two that I moved here because of their talent and their skills with kids and they're not their veterans. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you see the, the parents here obviously gathered on the other side of the camera. Uh, I'd like for you to just to speak with them. Talk to the parents, the community here in Buffalo. What's your message for the city? So my thoughts and prayers go out to the people that were injured. I uh, certainly want parents to know that we support them, we support their children, we're going to support the school district and make sure that their children going to and coming from school are safe. Marley, yeah, Marley, any Marley. Timeline? Mayor Brown, you've had a very poignant tweet talking about the fact that Buffalo, New York is now a location for a school shooting. What is going through your head as the leader of the city? You never want to see this. Um, uh, school shootings have occurred all too frequently in this country. Uh, we never thought it would occur here in Buffalo. Um, we have had an incident here which we are deeply concerned about and still processing that incident. Uh, as uh, Deputy Commissioner Grimalia said, this is a, a crime scene now and we're trying to piece together all the information that we can to figure out exactly what happened and to make sure that we can all partner and work together to prevent these types of incidents from occurring again in the future. Gentlemen right here, gentlemen right here. Gentlemen right here, Claudine. Gentlemen right here. Dr. Cash, there's a lot of concerned parents here that showed up onto the scene and didn't hear necessarily from the school district specifically. They heard from other outlets, including media and other parents and their kids in the school. Uh, what do you have to say to those parents that didn't necessarily get that message out maybe as soon as they would have liked or to that nature? Yeah, we, we appreciate the parents' concern. It certainly is my concern. We got the message out as soon as we could, as soon as we had cogent details. And we've worked very closely with the city. The mayor is actually most helpful to me to get the accurate information that was occurring because he worked so closely with his commissioners. And when I got that piece together, we then put that message out. Spectrum. Just real quick, I know you want to get them out slowly, but is there a timeline on when we'll start to see at least the first students get reunited with their parents? Students have been coming out of the building, so we, we have more. There was a lot of students in the building. There was over 100 students, so it's going to take some time. So that is a process that's ongoing. Can you just describe where the investigation goes from here and what we can expect to see in the next couple of hours, the next day or so? Our detectives, our investigators are, are working to build up leads, talk to witnesses, and then we will, once we have sufficient evidence working with the district attorney's office, we will swiftly move to make an arrest. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Any other updates we will provide? Okay, so you Thank just you. heard from Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown.